I guess we're gonna about to start. Welcome to Preview Environment. I'm very excited to give this talk. I am Sui Martinez. I am a software engineer based in Boston, also AWS community builder. I'm very passionate about community and advocating for exclusivity, and this is one of the reasons why we bring in this talk to all of you guys. Um, hi, everybody. My name is uh, Ramiro Berrellesa. I'm the founder and CEO of Octero. Octero is, uh, we're building a platform to automate dev, test, and preview environments for software teams of all sizes. Can I get a show of hands of oh, who knows what preview environments are? Okay, awesome, awesome. Can we get another show of hands who actually use it at their company currently? Okay, not a lot of you. Hopefully we'll change that by the end of the talk. <laughs> Exactly. So, you know, uh, by now it's kind of an old saying that every software company is, every company is a software company, but it became a reality. From the moment we wake up, you know, the moment like we put a shower, have breakfast, you know, get, take the train, get to your office, we interact with software everywhere. Our phones, our appliances, our cars, our houses, it's really everywhere. Like, I've been in this industry for about 20, 25 years, back then, Software was more of a solo effort, but we're, that doesn't happen anymore. Software is now built by large teams. And software is more than just writing code, right? We have people who write code, very important, but we also have people who design interfaces. We have people that specialize in testing software. We have people that specialize in talking to customers to understand their pain points. We have people that design businesses, business processes that will need software to provide value for their customers. So, you know, you get it, right? Like, there's a lot more uh, in the process of building software than it was 20, 30, 40 years ago. However, we still have a lot of processes that are left over from, you know, an older, different times. This looks like, you know, what the standard of, of the software development life cycle looks in a lot of places. You know, through, through my role at Octero, I get a chance to talk to a lot of like, CTOs, VP of engineering, and this is, still happens in a lot of places. Uh, it's an oversimplification, I know, but in general, you know, you have a team that's gonna be chartered with implementing a solution to a problem. The engineers will, the PMs will spec it, engineers will code it, and at some point, this code will be put in GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, where you're gonna have a code review. Your fellow engineers will review your code, will give you feedback on style, on scale, correctness, are the tests passing, linting, all those things. At that moment, you know, you will say, hey, I'm ready. Let's merge these changes. Then, if you're following good practices, you're going to have CI, CD, Argo, Harness, any of these things, and you will deploy it to stage. If you have a, what I think is a healthy process, then you will going to have kind of like other people look at these code changes once they're in staging. Maybe your PM, maybe a stakeholder, in some cases, other teams, right? And then, when they have feedback, and this has happened to me in the past, we get into this very contentious process because for most developers, they were done. Hey, code review passed, it's merged. And now you have somebody from outside of your team, you know, or your random CEO, random founder of a startup, giving you feedback when you were done. And this creates a not so good cycle where people can get in, <laughs> in trouble, fight. So this is not ideal. And if you look at this, right, see this flow, there's a couple of pink squares there. And there's something interesting about that, right? Or I find it interesting, and that's why, why we're here to talk about this problem. You can see that the code review and then the rest of the reviews are two separate steps at two very different points of the review cycle. It's almost like we're creating two different kind of like review moments, right? The first one is just about the code. It's not about the value, it's not about the customer, it's not about the problem we're solving. It's about the code. And I don't know you, but I have experience in teams where the code review becomes style, spaces, commas, linting. Not really about are we building the right thing? Are we solving the problems that our customers need us to solve? So this is not great, no? especially now that we're building software for pretty much everything in our life. Um, and then the other aspect of this, if, if, if you remember the, the diagram, is that code review process is called code review. So anybody who's not trained to read code, and these are like technical people who are not experts in reading code, PMs, designers, stakeholders, founders of companies, directors, 
even your customers in some cases, right? They are excluded completely from this process. They only see the final step. They don't see, you know, the in between. So, and this is, this is not good. So, but you know, this is the past. Like we're all here, we're all technologists. We believe there's a better future. So what if there was a way for us to kind of shift this, to move these pink squares, both of them, as close as possible to the beginning? Can we, can we shift it left? Can we invite everybody? Can we give everybody in your organization an early access invite to the software development lifecycle party? Can we? Yes, we can. Yes, we can, Romero. <laughs> we can do a preview environment. Preview environment is an isolated environment where you can test your code as soon as the pull request is open. Creating a simultaneously, like, similarly, like, real production, you get to interact with the changes and see and review your code. So as soon as you do a pull request, that generates a shareable link as soon, um, and then you, now you get to see everyone be part of this inclusive um, process. You get to provide feedback now just the developer, but your stakeholder, your designer, get to see these changes in their browser. They no longer need to run it on their local machine. Um, now everyone is included in this process. So now I'm gonna put you, I'm the CEO of this famous taco restaurant because who doesn't love tacos? I, we've been meaning to deploy this big feature in our application because we knew it was gonna enhance our customer experience. And however, once the feature got deployed, it's not what I envisioned, it's not what the customer, what the customer or the team wanted. So we were all frustrated. See, as a non-developer, I'm excluded from this process. So I couldn't detect these issues early on or provide my feedback. So we impacted our business, lost money, and potential customers. Now we have to repeat this whole process all over again. And our developers are not happy about this because that means the work that they thought that was completed was actually not completed. And they have to repeat this whole cycle all over again. Clone the repo, test it on the local machine, and hope that in this time they got it right. This effect, and I think Ramiro mentioned on this, affects kind of like the morale of the team. The developer doesn't want to hear that their work wasn't done well in the first round. Um, they don't want to, you know, repeat this process multiple times. We want to create like an automated process for them. This impact is going to eventually, if we're going to repeat this process, we're going to impact our business, our, the morale of the team, and potentially lose a lot of money. So I want to change this. I, I know there's a better, more effective approach. Ramiro, can I see some of these changes before it goes live? I know you want to our great developer. Yes, yes, we can. Great. So what we're going to show you now is the process we just implemented. We, uh, now that we use Kubernetes, this is a lot easier than before. So now we have preview environments in our changes. So I'm going to show you what we've been working on. Okay, And then you see how, how much better it is. And this. So first, you know, for all of you, if you haven't heard of the famous taco shop that we work at, this is what it looks like. It's a software to validate our, our, our taco store. Very simple. You put some orders, you put your email, you order them, and when they're ready, tacos are on the way. This is a microservice-based application, runs on, on Kubernetes, and the source code is available if you want to check it out later. All you need is a Kube cluster and QCPI. So it works. Microservices, the whole thing. So what I did was, um, you know, we're in QCon. Okay. Um, Chicago has great Mexican food, by the way. You should check it out. But they're also known for another food item, which is pizza. pizzas. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I figured, why not? Let's just have another version of, of our application branch into the new market. I'm excited. Let for, me see it. For hungry conference goers. Uh, so what we did is we implemented preview environments. Okay. The first thing that happens here is that when a developer opens a pull request, you now are gonna see two things. You know, we have the code, so we can check it out. You can see, make sure we follow the standards, that the logos are the right format, right size, all that stuff. But the beauty of this is that now you have a live environment that was created 
on our Cube cluster. For this, I'm using a cluster in Cebo, running in, in New York, standard vanilla Kubernetes. Uh, and you can see these links, and you can see the application up and running. So let me go here. And you can see now that instead of tacos, we have pizza. Hold on. I noticed the logo is not up there. What happened? Oh, that's a good point. So something, something happened here. I don't know, but I'm glad you caught it. Thank you. Yep, okay. We didn't have test for this. I looked at the code, and the logo was there. It's there. You see, the, you know, it's called Pizza Shop. This is a good reason why we have preview environment. We can see it. The code has been changed, but it doesn't reflect it on the visual integration of it. OK. So well, we can improve that. I magically fixed this already. I did it okay. while she was talking. I have Get a, the magic I hidden, have a hidden developer under the, under the desk. Okay. <laughs> but here we have a separate pull request. Same changes, but you can see now it's a different preview environment. Different number, different URL, it's a different name, specific Kubernetes. Uh, and let's see this one now. Oh, this one has the logo. Awesome. See, it has the logo. It is one, you know, it has the menu for dip dish, thin slice, or my favorite, pineapple pizza. Good uh, job. <laughs> and you have the logo for the conference, all those things. But, you know, the cool thing about this is, you know, if you click on all the other uh, links here, we have the entire application running. So we could even, you know, like verify that actually I can order a pineapple pizza. And then we see the integration is working. In this case, it went through a queue to the other system. The cooks in the back end are going to cook our pizza. Uh, the check will be generated. I can even see the receipt. And you can even see that actually makes some changes here to show you that there's pizza. And this is uh, the big value of preview environments. You have full integrated environments. They look as close to production as you want. They're easy, automated, available. And as you saw, this enables a much healthier, better conversation Process. between developers, stakeholders, customers to help us build better software faster. Um, and now we're ready to start selling pizza. At, at no, Kipcon. I appreciate you for fixing that. And now let's go back to our presentation. I should have done this the other way around, but can you guys see it? No. There we go. Okay. Yep. And yeah, we're there. Okay. Okay, so as Ramiro mentioned, preview environment, like having the early feedback, increase the faster to hit to market. It also fostered that collaboration, not just with the developer, but with the rest of the team to increase exclusivity. Um, foster that collaboration also means that the business is gonna be better because now you're giving room for diversity ideas to be developed, innovation to happen. Um, and now everyone feels you know, have that VIP access to the party. And essentially, no one misses out on these delicious tacos. So why Kubernetes? So I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with Kubernetes. Um, Kubernetes is such a powerful tool that allows you to do a lot of different things and adjust depending on the demand of your business. Um, you're able to do um, manage large infrastructure, um, a lot of the microservices, and you can easily create these resources and clean up as soon as you no longer need them. Um, essentially, being more cost effective than other um, approach. And these are also like easy to um, automate a lot of the processes as well. Um, and one of the reasons, and this is on a high level of what happens with GitHub Actions and Kubernetes. On this diagram, we see like when we push the code to GitHub, that signals or trigger um, GitHub Actions to now create this build, and now essentially now able to deploy your um, your project. Uh, we'll create this isolated environment where you can test your code um, and see a vision integration of what that looks like simultaneously, um, like it will, will look like in real production. So now we are not alone here. Um, 
we've done some case studies of companies that are integrating this and have seen the benefits of preview environment. They understood what preview environment can do for their company. Um, they know that they can like create, um, you know, faster, they can, um, you know, upscale faster, detect these issues and performance of their application, and also increase exclusivity um, among their team. They understood that just not the developer is, could be part of this process, but everyone um, can share um, innovative ideas and, um, and different feedback, and we can essentially um, make a better product a a after that. Um, actually, this morning, I wish the, the schedule had been the other way around, but this morning was a great talk in ArgoCon on how Masterclass implements preview environments for their teams using Argo, Kubernetes, Crossplane, and a bunch of other technologies. So the recording will be out in a couple of weeks. If it's a topic that you care about, I highly recommend that. That's a bit more technical. They talk about manifest generation parameters. It was a really good talk uh, on the power of this. And you can see the scale. This is like large companies with thousands of preview environments and how well Kubernetes allows us to just manage them. Um, and here's like, like a call to action for all of us is there's a lot of evidence that pre-environments make everything better like for the software development life cycle, quality, testing, verification. So highly recommend you to kind of take a look at this. Uh, as you saw in our demo, it's, it's not hard to start. You can start simple. You can do it either open source or there's a lot of vendors out there uh, that we're doing this, including, including uh, Octeto. Uh, but, you know, start simple. Leverage the ecosystem. There's open source, there's commercial, there's a lot of guidance. Um, the important thing here is automate everything. Make sure that you have that sweet spot of like, nobody has to think about this, create a PR, create a premium environment, close the PR, destroy the premium environment. And the most important thing is evangelize. I think that the technology part is straightforward. I think what we all need to do as, as people in the, in the edge of technology is talk more about this. For me, one of the aspects that I love about our community is how we normally talk a lot about technology, but also about the humans and the value and how technology helps us solve problems. So please help us evangelize this. If it's something that you believe is important, go back to your team, share this, share the other talk. I'm sure there's more talks on, on this topic uh, today uh, because it's important, right? Like building software is more than just code. We have larger teams, different functions. We can all benefit from people being able to give us early feedback. So please, please uh, help us. And, and here's a list of, um, of some of the vendors out there. It's not inclusive. There's a lot more doing this. Um, you can do it Argo. You can do it like everything yourselves. I don't recommend you do that. Find a good partner. You know, each of these companies does things a different way, depending on what you need. Uh, check them out. Most of them have free, vast tutorials. Um, what's important is, you know, pick the right tool for what you want to accomplish. Yeah. But, you know, I'm a big believer of free environments, of course, bias here, uh, but do check them, check them out. And essentially, again, this is all about bringing everyone to the party, not just the developer <laughs> into the process. Everyone has a, like a valid feedback to bring um, and could create a foster this happy medium with, with, within your team and essentially create a, be a better business for you. So when we think of preview environment, we know it builds better product, but the most important is that working together as a developer and the rest of the team to come into the same page to deliver the best possible experience for your customers is the essential goal of preview environment. And this will be like what it will look like. You implement your solution and as, as soon as the pull request has ha happened, you see a code review and a vision integration of what that looks like. You get to interact, provide your feedback, now merge it, and voila, here to go. And now this is it. And that's any all. questions? I hope it was useful. <laughs> uh, if you have any questions, we're, we're here. We have one in the back. So, and in the example we have, um, we're using the triggers of GitHub Action when the PR is either merged or closed to do the teardown. And this can be as simple as delete the namespace, or if you have something more complex, that's where you can use Argo, Crossplane, Terraform, any of these tools to manage the lifecycle of your cloud services, microservices, all those things. Like we, with our customers, implement a lot of these things with kubectl, Helm, and, and all these triggers that the different CI CD systems 
half. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but that, that can be a challenge, and, and there's, no, there's no silver bullet. Um, autoscalers, things like Carpenter, like Keta, work really well for this. Uh, part of the work we, we've done with our customers is in kind of help them understand the sizing. One thing that we've discovered through use, especially seeing like preview environments at, at very high scale, is that they actually take a lot less resources than one thinks, because most of the preview environments are not used at scale. They're deployed, you use them a bit, and then you close them. That's why investing in a, in a good cleanup sequence is very important. Uh, setting up requests and limits is key. Having a closer to auto scales and that it scales down. A lot of these vendors, ourselves included, also implement things like uh, garbage collection policies so that the, after a few hours it's shut down. Uh, it's put scale to zero when there's no, no requests in a specific time period. You do have to invest in those things to make it easier because you can just put your cluster to auto scale forever, but you cost is a concern. Yeah. And, and you have to watch that out as well. Um, we haven't seen that much the errors because of capacity. The only one, and it's kind of a very tactical trick, is when you set up your cluster, make sure you have enough IPs. Because actually the, the, the one thing we've seen people hit faster rather than resources is when they have too many pods in a single node. Because at least in AWS, I mm -hmm. think 110, 120 pods is the maximum. And you have to play with like your VPC configuration to get more IPs. So you do have to measure these things. Uh, but that's more of a concern. Once you set it up, uh, we've seen examples of, of very large scale, thousands of, of, of preview environments you know, per day. And, and that's why, like and we said early, why Kubernetes is such a great technology for this. Because you know, this was built for infant scale in like high density. And that's a great thing for preview environments because you want them to be cheap, fast, and, and effective. Do we have one more? Any other questions? Going once. Well, uh, if you want to talk later, we're going to be here, you know, all week. Uh, and connect there. That's our QR code. Points to our Twitter accounts, websites, and stuff like that. Uh, we'd love to continue the conversation yeah. outside of the conference on X, on Mastodon, or your favorite online medium. And if you have any feedback, feel free to also provide it. Um, we also welcome feedback to, have, to get better in the next one. So thank you for, for joining us today. Thank you.